Hello to all of you future mathematicians. Let's talk about pancakes. So take your favorite pancake and take your favorite friend, which is going to taste your favorite pancake. But because you are also hungry, then you'll probably want to cut the pancake, half for you and half for your friend. But you're a future mathematician, you want to do it in an interesting way. You want to cut the pancake with a straight line. So already here you have a nice interesting problem. Can you always cut a pancake to half and half with a straight line? Well, if the pancake has a nice circular shape, then yes, you can do it. It is very easy to do it. But what happens if it has a wheel shape, like the one behind me? Then in general, it is not clear if we can cut it to half and half with exactly one straight line. But I don't want to stop here. I want to go even further. Because your friend also has his favorite pancake, and he also wants to cut it to half and half. And now the question is, can you cut both your pancake and your friend's pancake with the same straight line? This is already a much harder problem than before, at least twice as hard. So my goal today is to say that yes, you can actually do it. And not only you can do it, the intuition behind the proof is quite easy and simple. And the proof itself is not really hard. Most of it is very, very basic mathematics that you learn in your first course in analysis. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so we want to prove something about pancakes. And as usual, a good place to start is with a definition. So if you go to Wikipedia, then we'll see that the pancake is sort of a starch-based flat cake made with uh, eggs and butter and milk and all sorts of nice stuff. Now, this is a very good definition if you actually want to bake the pancake, but not if you actually want to work with it, you want to cut it in half. So let's give a more uh, abstract, more mathematical definition of a pancake. So for us, a pancake will be just a set of points in the plane, which will satisfy very nice and very natural uh, conditions. So the first condition is that you want your pancake to be bounded. You don't want it to go to infinity in some direction. Well, it can be very, very interesting to have an infinite pancake if you want to eat it, but not if you actually want to work with it. For the second condition, because I want to cut the pancake, let's make sure first that the pancake is just one piece. Or more abstractly, if you have two points, then you want to make sure that there is some curve, some path that connect these two points. Mathematically speaking, this, this condition is called the path connectedness. Every two points, there is some path that connected. The third condition is a bit of a strengthening of the second condition, which tells us that, well, we have some paths that connect every two points. But if you look on this path, it can be very, very thin, right? It can be without any area. There's nothing to eat there. So we want to make sure that we don't have something like that. So one way to solve it is to say that every time that we have some point inside the pancake, there is a nice small ball around it, which all belong to the pancake. For example, if we look on that point, there is some ball around it which belongs to the pancake, but if we look on that point, we don't have Mathematically speaking, this condition about the pancake, the condition about the set of points in the plane, says that this set should be open. And in the example behind me, to make it an open set, we can, for example, thicken the line uh, in between the two pieces. Okay, so this is the definition for the pancake. It has three conditions. The third is you want the pancake to be bounded, and the second and third condition, the path connectedness and the openness, just tells us that the pancake is just one piece. It is not contained of two or more pieces. Now that we have a definition for a pancake, we actually want to cut it to half with a straight line. So let's look on vertical lines. And the question is, can we find some vertical line which cuts the pancake exactly to half and half? So what can we say about this problem? Well, if you take the line and move all the way to the left, then eventually all the pancake will be to the right of the line. And similarly, if you take all the way to the right, then all the pancake will be to the left of the line. Right? This is just follows from the first condition that the pancake is bounded. But also, if we start from the right and move little by little to the left, then the part of the pancake moves little by little from left to the right. And intuitively, we expect that somewhere in the middle, we will be exactly half from the left and half from the right. Now, if you already took your first course in analysis, you probably have some sort of theorem in mind which is applicable here. But even if you don't, let's try to formalize a bit our intuition and see what sort of mathematical result we can hope for. So for that, let's define a function, which tells us how much of the area of the pancake is left of the line. And for simplicity, let's assume that the total area is 1. So what did we see so far? If we move all the way to the left, then there is no pancake from the left of the line, so the value of the function is going to be 0. And if we move all the way to the right, then all of the pancake is from the left of the line, so the value of the function is going to be 1. And if we move little by little from right to the left, then the function should be decreasing little by little until it gets to 0. Or if you want the other way around, you start with 0, you increase monotonically little by little until you get to 1, and then stop there. Now, what was our intuition? Our intuition told us that, well, if you start with 0, 
and move little by little until you get to one and eventually somewhere in the middle you need to get exactly half. Okay, right now saying that our function start at zero, end at one and somewhere in the middle hits half is only a conjecture. So let's ask what can go wrong. So for example, we can start at zero, end at one, but somewhere in the middle have some sort of jump over the half. And this is very bad for our intuition because then the conjecture will be false. But can this really happen in this example? So for that, let's take two lines, put one just before the jump and one just after the jump and ask, what do they say? Well, the value of the function for each line is exactly the area from the left of the line. So if you want to look on the difference between the values of the function, this is exactly the area of the pancake bounded between these two lines. But can we say something about this area? Well, one trivial thing that we can say is that the area is bounded from right and left by our two lines, right? This is just by definition. But it's also bounded from above and below because the whole pancake is bounded from above and below. So all in all, our area is bounded inside a rectangle. Now, this is great because we know exactly how to compute the area of a rectangle. This is just the width times the height. So what can we say about this area? Well, the height is uniformly bounded because the pancake is uniformly bounded. But the width, we can make sure that the width is as small as possible by just making the lines as close as possible. So now we know that the area of the rectangle can be as small as we want, meaning that the area of the pancake bounded between the two lines can be as small as we want, meaning that the difference between the values of the function from right to left is as small as we want. So this argument tells us that we cannot have an actual jump. If we started at zero and ended with one, we must pass through half in the middle. So what we actually used here is the fact that we not just start from zero and end with one, but we move little by little. Or mathematically speaking, our function is continuous. So if you took your first course in analysis, basically we use the fact that we started at zero, ended with one, and our function is continuous. So we can use the intermediate value theorem, which tells us that if you start with zero, end with one, you move to half. But in any way, what we have just seen is that you can always cut your pancake with a vertical line to half and half. And if this is not a real life application of mathematics, I'm not sure what is. Moreover, I think that we can actually prove something even stronger. Not only there is a line which cut the pancakes, there is exactly one line. So what will happen otherwise? If we have two such lines that cut the pancake to half and half, then in a sense you can actually show that all of the area of the pancake is either to the right of the right line or to the left of the left line. But this is exactly goes against our two conditions, right? The past connectedness and the openness. These conditions were added exactly to a vertex. So we have exactly one line. So all in all, the boundedness meant that we have at least one line, the connectedness means that we have at most one line, and together we have exactly one line. Great, so now we know that there is exactly one vertical line which cuts the pancake in half. Now, there was nothing special about vertical lines other than the fact that it is easier to visualize on the screen, and you can do it in any direction. Meaning in any direction, you have exactly one line which cut the pancakes in half. Okay, up until now we only had one pancake, but originally we wanted to cut two pancakes. So let's add a second pancake and again ask, how can you solve this problem? Well, our line should cut the first pancake in half, so let's add it. And we know we can because we just proved that we can. Now in general, there is no reason for this line to cut the second pancake in half, but maybe if we choose the direction in the right way and rotate it a little bit, then eventually with some help of dark magic, the line will cut the second pancake in half also. By the way, Note that we rotated the direction of the line and not rotated all of the lines around a single point. Anyway, how do we even try to solve something like that? Well, exactly for this we have the computer and we have these sort of visualizations to get maybe some intuitions about the solution. So for example, let's start with this line. It cuts the first pancake in half but doesn't even touch the second pancake. Now if we start to rotate the direction, then eventually it will touch the second pancake. But if it continues, then eventually it again, will not touch it. But there is something different. The second pancake on the beginning was on one side of the line and on the other side in the end. So this is very, very similar to what we had before, just before we moved from left to right and now we rotate the direction. With this in mind, maybe we can find a proof which is similar to what we had before. We need to define some sort of function which should start at zero, end with one, and move little by little from zero to one, or in other words, it is continuous, and then use the intermediate value theorem, which says that if you start with zero and with one, you pass through half. The problem is that if before we moved from right to left, which was very easy, now we need to rotate it. So the function will be a little bit more complicated. 
So the solution is instead of defining a function on the real line, we define a function on the circle. And any point on the circle will define the direction of the line that you work with. So for example, if you look at this point, it will correspond to this line. Now note that the direction of the point is not the direction of the line, it is actually perpendicular to it. This way we can not only define the line, but also the, define the side of the line that we measure. So for example, we can now rotate the point and the line, and each time ask how much of the second pancake is in the colored side of the line, and this will be exactly our new function. So let's see an example. Right now, all of the second pancake is in the colored side of the line, so the value of the function is going to be 1. But if you rotate it, then eventually all of the pancake will be on the other side of the line, the non-colored, so the value of the function is 0. So again, we have a function we start with 1, ends with 0, and if we can show that we move by little by little, or the function is continuous, then using the intermediate value theorem means that somewhere in the middle we pass exactly in half. Now because the line always cut the first pancake in half, and now that we know it will cut the second pancake in half, so we know that it cuts simultaneously the two pancakes both in half. Okay, this is a nice blueprint for a proof, but I cheated somewhere in the middle. I assume that we can start with 1 and end with 0. So in the first proof, we could use the boundedness of the pancake to show it. But right now we don't have anything similar to it, and actually it is not true in general. So what can we say? So let's start with something which is not trivial. Say 3 quarters and a quarter. I claim that the same proof still works. So start with the line, and begin rotating it, until you do exactly half of a rotation. So what happened? You started with some direction and ended with the second direction, but because you did exactly half a rotation, you ended with the same direction. The only difference is on which side of the line you compute the area of the second pancake. So what now? Forget about the second pancake for a bit and consider only the first one. We have two lines, both of which on the same direction, and both of which cut the first pancake exactly in half. But we have already seen that the two such lines must be the same. So the only difference is where the colored side is. If we started above the line, we ended up with below the line. Or in our example, if we started with three quarters, we ended exactly the complement of it. So if the full area is just one, we started with three quarters and ended with one quarter. Or in other words, if we started with something above half, we ended with something below half. Or started something below half, we ended with something above half. And now the same proof applies. You start with something above half, and you move little by little until you get to something below half, so you must somewhere in the middle meet exactly half. And this is again the intermediate value theorem. But of course, you also need to prove that we move little by little, or that the function is continuous, but I will leave it as an exercise, and for those interested, uh, I added a link below in the description of the videos for some notes about this subject. But anyway, this is it. Now you can go to your parents, your family, your friends, and tell them, this is a real-life application of mathematics. You can cut two pancakes with exactly one straight line. This result is surprisingly called the pancake theorem. And if you really want, you can generalize it to higher dimension. So right now we are in dimension 2, we had two pancakes in the plane. And if you want, you can go to dimension 3, where you have a ham sandwich, which contains three parts. The lower bread, the upper bread, and the ham in the middle. So the pancake theorem in dimension 3, which is called the ham sandwich theorem, tells us that there is some plane which casts both the bread pieces and the ham to exactly half. Now, the ideas of the proof, and the proof itself is mostly the same, you want to define some sort of continuous function and use the intermediate value theorem to start with 0, end with 1, and somewhere in the middle get half. The main difference is that in our proof, in dimension 2, we had a circle, and we could use the intermediate value theorem, but in dimension 3 you have a sphere, and you can no longer use the intermediate value theorem. There. But fortunately, there is some sort of generalization of this theorem called the bursuk ulam theorem. Now this is a very very interesting and very very useful theory in topology, but it is a whole subject on its own and I will not get into it here. But for those interested, this will also appear in the notes that I will link below, but this is already a very very long video, so I will see you again the next time.